feel about chocolate. You know, chocolate bars, chocolate cake, chocolate ice cream, chocolate chip cookies. Well, I'm feeling pretty hungry. How do you feel about little biting flies? Yeah, probably not as enthusiastic as you feel about chocolate. But did you know that the two are closely connected? In fact, we probably wouldn't have any chocolate without one very particular type of tiny biting fly. Chocolate comes from the fruit of cacao trees, which grow in tropical places like rainforests. Like with apples, the flower blossoms on a cacao tree must be pollinated to turn into fruit. And these flies are the only known pollinators of cacao trees. So in other words, no biting flies, no chocolate. Hey. Pollination is the transfer of pollen from the male part of a plant to the female part. Sometimes the wind can carry pollen around, but often animals like bats, bees, and moths do the work. Without pollination, many new plants cannot produce new seeds, and no new seeds means no new plants. Pollinators are often really important to the ecosystems they live in, and they're important to us. Without bees, flies, and other pollinators, you wouldn't have this, 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 and, oh, what is this? Pollinators are important to humans because they pollinate our crops. And without pollinators, we would have less food to eat and less diverse sources of food that provide us with a lot of critical nutrients as well, like vitamins A, vitamin C, vitamin E. We really need these pollinators so that we can be healthy. We're worried about habitat loss for pollinators, as well as diseases and climate change. Honeybees, although we manage them, are not threatened in the sense of being a threatened or endangered species. They're very, very abundant. But right now, on average, beekeepers suffer about 30% colony losses each year over the winter in the United States. And that is a very heavy economic burden. Pollinators aren't just important for human nutrition. In the wild, pollinators contribute to the biodiversity and resilience of ecosystems. Pollination allows plants to reproduce. If the plants aren't using wind to get their pollen to other plants, then they need some individual to be, to be carrying that pollen for them. And pollinators are the ones who really provide that service. Globally, about 86% of our flowering wild plants depend on pollinators. And in a rainforest, I believe that's even a bit higher. So something like 90% or more of our rainforest plant species are pollinator dependent. So if we didn't have the pollinators, we wouldn't have rainforests. They would not collapse overnight, but they would collapse over time without those reproductive services. So what can we do to help out pollinators? Well, on a large scale, we can work with farmers to encourage them to adopt some pollinator-friendly practices, things like ensuring that there are clean water sources available and making sure that they plant pollinator-friendly plants. We can encourage farmers and beekeepers to work together. We can have the beekeepers share information about where their beehives are, and the farmers can share information about when they're planting, when they plan on spraying, so that the the bees can be healthy and protected and not at any sort of risk of pesticide or residual dust. In many areas of the world, um, indigenous and rural populations have been farming for years and years, and they have lots of knowledge about best practices to incorporate pollinators into the type of farming that we need to do on a large scale. There are things that we can do, like plant pollinator-friendly plants outside our homes or in our school and community gardens. There are also citizen science projects, like the Great Sunflower Project, that we can get involved in to monitor important pollinators, like bees. Power to the pollinators.